Well, so hello, we got a, another interesting project here at the shop. Um, we had six Bargello needlepoint chairs come in uh, with a nice fruit wood frame, a high gloss fruit wood frame, which presents a problem. Uh, a little bit later I'll talk about it. But anyhow, um, they came to us simply to remove this, the slip seats and to secure with our, our seat webbing uh, so that these don't fall through. So when I brought them to the shop, um, so I want to show you the bottom. Um, what, what the manufacturer has done very unwisely is just take a piece of plastic, a um, piece of uh, you know, rubber, and just stretched it over the, over the frame. That's all there is for support. Um, you need a lot more than that. So what happens with this, this is latex, what happens with this is that it dries out and then it just caves in. So eventually this beautiful Bargello needlepoint is going to fall right through. So no problem. I mean, I looked at them in the house and gave an estimate and everything's cool. Except that when I brought them back, I tried to take, um, I took the four screws out and then I tried to take the frame out. So, uh, and I couldn't do it without breaking the frame, without breaking the frame. And I'm not going to do that. So what they had done to upholster these, they had taken the frame apart, um, new, it was new. I mean, it, it was a pot, it was brand new. And then they, they, they lay this inside pretty much and then they, and they glue and they bolted um, the legs on. And the only way that I can get this seat off is if I unbolt it, unscrew it and then hammer this out. And I'm not going to do that on a beautiful frame like this. It'll all splinter in here and everything. So, so we have a problem. So this is one of the things that comes up as an upholsterer. You know, you have to figure out these you know, you have to do uh, problem solving. So I think I came up with a method, I, I think it's going to work, um, where I'm going to web it on the interior of the chair without taking it off. I'm going to keep the screws in, in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give myself a little bit more to see here. And I, I would say that if you don't have a pneumatic staple gun, I don't think you're going to be able to do this. The only reason I'm going to be able to do this is with the pneumatic staple gun. So what I'm going to try to do I'm going to put, I need to put a little piece of filling in between because the frame of the chair is, um, it's probably, you know, a half of an inch, which is about what this rubberized horse hair is. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut this rubberized horse hair to fit over this opening. Lay that in there nicely. Now, I have to duplicate what the webbing stretcher would do at this point. Let me just show you that. If you see my other videos, you know that when you're using seat webbing, and this is a seat webbing, I can't emphasize enough to use seat webbing, not that black webbing that you see with the, that's for backs. And I don't even use that. For, I don't use that anywhere in my shop. I use this everywhere, even on backs. It's the stronger of the two webbings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to duplicate the webbing stretcher with my gun. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop from that. There's a very little spot on the front of the frame here. So that's where I'm going to start. Normally you've seen my videos, I go from back to front. On this one here I have to go front to back because it's just a little bit I can catch of the wood. I'm going to do that. I folded it over and I'm going to staple. I'll get a few staples in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to staple up in here as tight as I can get it, about halfway up on this wood frame here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press down this way with the gun. And what that's doing is duplicating what the webbing stretcher would do. It's giving you the proper leverage and it really is tight. So let's do a couple more. What I'm going to do is say, hey, you know what, for strength purposes, I think it's fine to leave that up like this. You know, we have to improvise a little bit on these, on the next time that they need to be upholstered. Thank goodness they don't need to be upholstered because they would have to come off if they're going to be upholstered, not repaired. So we would have to um, knock out those legs. And honestly, I don't think I would want to even attempt it. But anyhow, um, so what we're going to do now is do the one, another one front to back.
Sometimes manufacturers build furniture, they're not thinking about reupholstering it. They're only thinking about it at one time when, they, when they're doing it. That's the case with these ones, even though they're high, you know, except for what they did on the seat. These are beautiful chairs. Beautiful finish, beautiful fruitless finish. All glossy. I'm getting enough leverage when I do this. And I'm tightening it just like it would be with the webbing strip. side to side and we're going to weave. We're going to start with under, over, and under. And we're going to do one side, we're going to fold it in the circle. And then I'm going to do one side. How this worked. Oh yeah, that's that's as good as webbing it on the top, and it's the proper webbing. And so what what that means is we're going to get at least a lifetime out of the bujello um, on this seat. So we rescued another one. So <laughs> thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.